Heart of Oak, Naval Miniatures Rules for the Age of Fighting Sail. Fighting Sail, Fleet Action, 1775 to 1815. Blood Bilge and Iron Balls, a tabletop game of naval battles in the Age of Sail. We are not going to review one set of rules today. We're going to review three sets of rules. And the more clever among you will already have noticed these three sets of rules share a common theme. That theme is water, great big balls. And then, well, I mean, obviously, there's probably bilges on all three of these. People ask me all the time, hey, which of these rules do you prefer? And my response is, for what? These are tools. Do you prefer a hammer or a screwdriver? Well, what am I trying to do? If I'm trying to drive a screw, I don't want a hammer. Doesn't mean I don't like hammers, and that's what we want to talk about today. One of the things I want to do with this video is help you understand which of these rules is the right set of rules for you, at least for what you are trying to accomplish. And I actually laid these out, at least you'd actually be laid it. I laid them out by size, because, you know, kind of a hipster thing to do. You know, people, you know, there are people that organize their books by color. There are other people that they, they like it better when they put their books on the shelf like this. These are not serious people. These are not literate people. But you are, and that's why you're here. And so really the first thing we need to talk about is these, these naval rules run the spectrum. And I got them arrayed like this because this is essentially the spectrum of complexity per vessel. And that's really the way we need to think about naval war games. Some clever wag, smarter than me, probably Mike Hutchinson, might have been one of the old crew, might have been like one of the Don Featherstone guys, he pointed out, look, when you write, when you design a tabletop miniature war game, you are telling a story. You are exercising some editorial control over what happens within the table. And different sets of rules are designed to explore different decision-making processes. They put you into different roles. What experience are you looking to recreate on the tabletop? In the case of Heart of Oak, you're the captain of a vessel, Blood Bilge and Iron Balls. You're probably commanding a squadron of a small handful of ships, and Fighting Sail is really more suited for fleet actions. As you focus your lens down to the individual ship, things get more complicated on a ship-by-ship -ship basis, which is not to say that any one of these rules is more complicated. It's just to say that these three sets of rules have dedicated their complexity to different aspects of fighting on the big blue wet thing. Uh, as a line from one of my favorite uh, ocean-going movies, um, big blue wet, what is that from? I think that's from, oh, that's uh, VeggieTales, the pirates who don't say anything. So Heart of Oak is a very complex set of rules that is really primarily... Now, they include lots of vessels here. I don't know how you do that. Full disclosure, I haven't actually played these. They're a little beyond my uh, ken at this point. We'll get to it. Want to throw it down on the table. Very old school. This set of rules was published way back in 1982. And it's, it's part of the privateers and gentlemen world. I, from Fantasy Games Unlimited, there were like a series of novels and stuff. But this is great. This is probably the best introduction to Age of Sail war games that you could get. It talks about really just all of the little minutia for things like wearing and tacking. Look at this. If you want to turn across the wind, there's two ways to do it. One is to just Build up ahead of steam and then like flip and hope that you make it. The other way is to do this long, right? So this is, what is this? This is wearing. We tend to think about tacking, but with tacking, you're actually, it, it's the other way. Tacking, you're, you're, the wearing goes all the way around. I think tacking is where you build up ahead of steam and you, you kind of hope that you've got the oomph to get around to where you're, to, anyway, long story short, it even goes into like the fleet you know, a little bit of the fleet, but the complexity of these rules is such that you have, you are worried about not just the angle of the wind, you're worried about the the angle of your sails, and the speed of the wind plays a huge role. The guy that sold this to me, by the way, Wayne's Books, look, look at his card. He's got the, he's got, yeah, I want to order more books from him just so I can build a little dungeon using the back of these cards. There, There's old Wayne right there. He, let me focus, man. There's Wayne, right? Sell us your stuff. Wayne's Books. That's where I got it from. Did a great job. If, if that matters to you. Came quick. Great shape for a game that is 40 years old. I, I had to carry the, the one, so it took a while. So anyway, you decide for your ship what, sa what sail are you going to be at. In Blood, Bilge, and Iron Balls, and just to give you an example, 
for the complexity issues per ship. Fighting sail? I don't care. Your sails are set to whatever they need to be. The captain of the ship will worry about that. You don't have to. Blood bilge and iron balls. You decide whether you are at full sail, fighting sail, I ain't moving or anchored. So you have four steps with this one. And really, you only have two because you're either moving at full speed or half speed. And then with this bad boy, look at this. You have to decide what is your sail setting, three through eight. And what is the wind astern? Is it quarter reach, broad reach, beating? These are the different speeds based on the, the, the class. And look at this. Here's for different classes of vessels. So there's a great big old chart that really provides a lot of, we're dialed way in to the minutia of each individual ship. An interesting process. And uh, what do we got here, right? So th then he even provides for, hey, where are you at? Are you dealing with the Southeast trades, right? What direction do you think the wind will be at? Are you in the horse latitudes? Are you in the doldrums? The roaring 40s? Are you, are you trying to, are you fighting a battle sailing around the, the horn? You know, pick your horn, Africa, whatever. Here's a copy of the ship record. Right, A, B, C, D, and then it, it, it tells what the different orders are. Uh, firing is, and I'm, oh, I'm sorry, this is probably a better example of the ship's record. Look at this. This is all of the information you need to deal with for your ship. Each ship, turn one, two, what's the wind at? What's my crew adjustment at? Where do the crew assign? What is my course? Where am, I, am I firing broadsides of the port of the star? The order, so this is a complicated game. It's not a bad game. It's not necessarily more complicated than this, but the complexities are dialed into you are the captain of the vessel. You have to micromanage what's going on on the ship. And if you want to micromanage the ship as it tools around the big blue wet thing, this is the way to go. He does provide one of the best campaign guides. He does have tournament rules in here, but I mean, if you can find enough guys to host a tournament of this game... Man, you're doing better than me. I, I can't even find well, you know, I can't even find somebody. To, hey, we're talking about the uh, campaigns. We'll let that go. And he provides really solid information on movement on a campaign basis. How fast are these ships going to move per day given the size of the ship and the direction of the wind and the strength of the wind, right? Wind that blows harder pushes you faster. Nobody else talks about that. Drives me, drives me crazy. He also talks about how far you can see. Now, this is all dialed into the millimeter range. And his little campaign here has just this you know, little island chain somewhere down in the Bahamas. And, it, you know, so, hey, what are we trying to do here? Where are we going? How far can you see in millimeters? How far can you move in millimeters? Once you get within... And then the nice thing about this very old school approach, it's all very mathematical. I know how fast the ship can move. I know what the scale of the vessel is. I know what the ground scale the ground scale will be. So I can translate real world measurements down to the tabletop. Very accurate, very simulationist, very interesting. I'm looking forward to getting this on the table when I have some time to just sit there, you know, drink some brain tea and all of that stuff. Now, blood bilge and iron balls. We'll take a look at the ship record. And here you have the ship record presented in a slightly different format. Instead of this just, look at this Excel spreadsheet, man. That's, look at that. It's all numbers? What? That sounds like math. With this one, you just scratch off stuff that gets hurt. And then you can erase it if it gets healed. And the bulk of the information that you need is right here. You still have to worry about how many guns do I have capable of firing and which side of my vessel do I want to present to the enemy. If I'm sailing one of these big bad big boys here, what do we got? Uh, the Zealous, HMS Zealous, 74 gun. If I've been blasted to smithereens here on my starboard side and I've only got three guns, I may want to go ahead and turn and present my other side so that I can fire a full broadside. I got to worry about whether my captain got conked on the head. And if he is conked on the head, I can't fire an organized broadside. If my gunner is hurt, if my experienced gunman cannoneers are hurt, I'm going to be shooting less accurately. How many crew do I have? You're managing a lot of other fires on the ship. How many crew do I want to put out fires versus how many do I want to try to find the replacement captain? You know, we got, if three of these stars are brought out, we got to you go down the chain of command, find the guy who's responsible, get him back up to the helm or to whatever the like fighting deck is where the, 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 the boss man yells at everybody from. Very similar, right? You're, you're still managing things as a captain, but because the process has been streamlined down to this level, you can manage a lot more ships, a lot more. I, I would, I tap out at about six ships. 
But if you're a better man than me, Gungadin, you could probably manage 10. Let's take a look at the movement. And in this one, again, you have to deal with the wind speed. And when it comes to wearing, it is a multi-turn. So remember, in uh, Heart of Oak, wearing, turning, when you're, when you're sailing into the wind and you need to change heading. Because, oh, look, there's rocks over there. I don't want to hit the rocks. I am going to turn a little bit to the right, three rights to make a left. That's how it works. And you set the order for this to happen. And so we're looking at turn one, and then here's the second half of turn one. Then here's the first half of turn two, second half of turn two. Here's turn three. And if you go the other way, there's a chance that you get to this point and you stall out and you don't get to turn at all. You have to try again. So, but otherwise, three turns if you want to do it the safe way. With this one, same thing. You turn until you're just facing as close to the wind as you can get, and then you make a sailing check, and if you make that check on the following turn, you can just sneak over and you have to sail at that heading and then on turn two. So there are multi-turn orders that you have to deal with, and you do still have this kind of, I'm turning one clock, one number on the clock. It's not clock face, but you know what I mean. You're turning in just, just towards 12 points for the direction that you're facing. And you can't sail closer than one or two of those clock points. I hate to use the word point because really the points are points on a... Th these are the points right here. Wait. Yeah, the points are broken up into 16 points. Uh, when you're watching the naval movies, you know, your master and commander. The best one that's ever been made. When they say, oh, two points to larboard. And then it's two of these points, which is 16. Not two of these points, which is 12. But... So, you know, forgive me for that if it's like grinding your ears. Um, this one does not, the Heart of Oak does not provide uh, very many scenarios. Blood Bilge and Iron Balls does. I don't know how you're expected to manage. This is, of course, the Battle of the Nile. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There's like 13 ships here. The good news is these ships are at anchor. They start at anchor, so that would make it easy. But, I mean, if you're talking like 15 to 13 ships, that's a lot. You're going to need to have some friends over. You're going to need to take some time. This is going to be at least a four-hour affair. Probably make for a good convention game if everybody's got three ships to it. But that's really what we're looking at here. I really like the way that uh, Blood Bilge and Iron Balls handles islands. You, you put the island down, and that's the surface expression. And then that island extends out one inch in every direction. So why don't we zoom in here so we can just show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So you've got your shoal. And then if you sail within one, two, like... If you sail, okay, so again, this is not an island, it's a shoal. If you sail across it, you roll a D6. Now, three, four, five, or six, you bottom out. If you're within one inch, two inch, or three inch, then you subtract one from that roll. So really, your shoals extend out an additional three inches. So they can be pretty, they can be pretty beefy. And then this is just for the Battle Royale. But islands work the same way. So, for example, here's islands, right? Your island or shoal is, is not just the danger zone. So some ships will have an easier time scooting across than others. And, of course, you can hide behind them for line of sight, which is always interesting. Uh, very, and then they do have lots and lots of vessels. But there is not a lot of, for the, uh, for the ship records, they're all the same. They're basically, and I guess I should probably point that out too. What do we look at here? A 90-gun ship, gun, ship of the line, it's the same for everybody. Is that really true? Not necessarily. And this is where we get into, remember we saw the Zealous and the Swiftsure. These are the ship records that are prepared for individual ships that were historical. So when you play through that Battle of the Nile, you've already got your HMS Theseus. You just print this off and you're ready to go. The Vanguard, print it off, you're ready to go. This may vary a little bit. The Vanguard is a 74 gunship. It may vary a little bit from the standard 74 gunship. Maybe historically we knew the Vanguard had better gunners. Maybe it was a little faster, so we give them a little bump, but... That's basically where this this lies. And movement, so movement in both of these cases is fairly predictable. Like, I know what my sails are at. I know what the wind is at. I know how fast I'm going to go. Yeah, me too, buddy. And then comes the red-headed stepchild. How fast is the wind? Don't care. I mean, yeah, okay, listen. If it's a storm, there's a chance that you're going to suffer some damage. But anything from a light breeze to a strong breeze... Doesn't matter. It's really more about the vessel because your movement with this, let's take a look at the ship records just to compare. This is it, man. You've got two, four, five stats and they don't really change. It, when you take damage, these get cut in half and that's all you need to worry about. When it comes to turning, you've got a very simple template that looks a little something like this guy here and you can turn just to your heart's content. 
Smaller ships, better sailing ships, you're going to roll dice. And there's, um, depending on the direction you're facing, you're more likely to get a movement point. And when you move around, boop, 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 you can kind of zigzag and snake and do whatever you need to. Because we've blown out, we've reduced our focus, we've zoomed way out to the point that we're not worried about why this ship started here and did like a little dog leg. I don't care. The important thing is it started here and it ended here. How it got to there doesn't really make that big a difference to us because I'm trying to manage six or seven ships all by my lonesome. And if I have to deal with this kind of math, I'm just not going to be able to manage it. The, the shooting in each of these games, and I think that's one thing that's kind of important to mention, is that the shooting in all of these games takes a backseat to the driving. Because in games of this sort, you really want to find the best angle where you're shooting at a guy where he can't shoot at you. A lot of attention is paid to the sailing. And if you don't want to pay that much attention to the sailing, then this is the game for you. The gunnery is about as complex in all of these. And so that's really, I think, a really good introduction to the Age of Sail. And which game is the one you'd most like to play? Well, I don't know, man. I don't know you. I don't know your story. I don't know your troubles. I don't know your travails. I don't know what you're trying to recreate on the tabletop. All I can tell you is if you really want to do one-on-one -on -one ship duels, Heart of Oak is the way to go. If you are really interested in major fleet actions that you can complete in a reasonable amount of time, three hours for you know 20 ships on a side, Fighting Sail is the way to go. If you want to do small squadrons, Blood Bilge and Iron Balls, probably the way to go. On the other hand, what do you want to feel like? You want to feel like an admiral? Bang, biting, fighting sail. You want to feel like a ship's captain? Heart of Oak, probably. But what are you more concerned about when you're being the ship's captain? Are you trying to manage the, the sails and micromanage the, the, the ship's crew and the complement as to what they're doing on any given turn? Heart of Oak. If you want to do more of a, um, you know, like a Star Trek, oh, we've got damage on decks 6 through 17, and then we got to reroute power through the phase core to give all power to the shields. If that's the kind, and I mean, I know that's science fiction, but if that's the kind of feeling you want, Blood Bilge and Iron Balls is the way to go because the focus is going to be, not the focus, but a large part of Blood Bilge and Iron Balls is managing the damage that you've taken. Okay, I've lost some of my ship systems. How can I make do with the systems that I've got? And the big difference here, one of the other things we'll talk about is in fighting sail, your ships are either good, they're wounded, or they're sunk. And that's really all there is to it. They have three statuses. In blood bilge and iron balls, you've got all kinds of issues that you're, you're, you're juggling. And maybe I don't care about my cannons. I need to put out my fires first. And maybe, and where the beauty of this game comes in, we haven't seen that on the channel yet, but where the beauty comes in is that if you can find some time, if I can just get out of the fight, take a deep breath, put out some of those fires, get a couple of guns back in action, then I can come back in for a second round, which you typically saw in those major battles. A ship would be so badly damaged they couldn't control it and they'd get blown out of the fight and the guys would jury rig something and they'd get the sails back in operation and they'd limp back in and they would do some blamage. Uh, the same that doesn't happen so much in Heart of Oak. In Heart of Oak, you have a a video game health bar right here that goes down, 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 and you have a limited ability to bring it back. But generally, you're just going to be taking a beating in Heart of Oak. Three wonderful little games that really kind of highlight the joy of war gaming. Some people complain about too many rule sets in a given genre. Napoleonic gamers, I'm looking at you. But I'm all in favor of choice. I love being able to sit down and decide who do I want to be today. Do I want to be the first mate, the captain, the admiral? Which one is it? Or I should probably do it the other way. You know, am I the sailing master, the captain, or the admiral? Who do I want to feel like today? Which challenges am I interested in recreating? And I, you know, these videos are supposed to go 20 minutes, but I don't have uh, 20 minutes to say. So I'm just going to close out with some soothing sounds of the ocean.